Hi, this is Tessa Keogh, and this is another 20 with Tessa. And as I've mentioned before, I am a member of the Guild of One Name Studies, and I'm also the regional representative for the Guild USA West Region. And a number of the members in the West Region have asked about making videos to discuss certain Guild topics or to explain how to use software programs or online research sites to assist with one name studies. And I previously recorded a video about the Social Security Death Index data gathering and how to place that into a spreadsheet. And this second one is about the Guild Bulletin Board, which is a new method that the Guild has instituted to provide for interaction among the Guild members and to provide another news resource. And so today what I wanted to talk to you about was using the Guild Bulletin Board and discussing it in conjunction with the Guild resources that are available to all members to assist with your one name study. So let's get started. Now at the outset, the bulletin board was recently introduced, and by that I mean in mid-September. Uh, a member of the Guild was working on the bulletin board as an alternative forum, and it was in beta testing, and then it was released to uh, certain members of the Guild, and then opened up for everyone to use. So it's been in effect for approximately a month for most people to be using. And what happened right away was there was kind of a fast and furious uh, email discussion on the forum about the use of the forum and the use of the bulletin board and how people were going to keep up with news and if news was going to be on just the forum or just the bulletin board or if it was going to be something that people had to check every method of communication in order to feel they were in the know. And I wrote an email that was published at the forum discussing kind of how I viewed all of these news resources. But interestingly enough, since the forum doesn't allow anyone to put a JPEG or a screenshot on, I couldn't show it in a visual format. So that's what I'm trying to do with this video. And I would just like everyone to kind of take a step back, take a breath, take a look at the different methods of interaction because there's a number of them. And then once you've played around with all of them, make a decision on what you like to use, what's intuitive to you, what you think you're going to get some benefit of, and just use those resources. No one in the Guild is forcing any members to use all of the resources or even any of the resources. So uh, I wanted to show you visually what I thought it looked like and the starting point I would say, and that's why the largest circle is there, is the Guild website. And the Guild website is the beginning and the end of Guild interaction. It basically has everything that you are going to be interested in looking at over the long term at the Guild website. Some of the news might come in earlier, questions, discussions, that type of thing, into other sections of Guild resources, but sooner or later it shows up on the Guild website. So if the only thing you go to is the Guild website, that's fine. You're going to find out the news. If you want to interact a little bit more with other Guild members or find out things in depth, then you're going to need to branch out and take a look at the spokes of what I consider this Guild wheel. And I'm just going to reference them first and then we're going to take a look at them. The first spoke of the wheel is the journal. The second spoke of the wheel are regional newsletters. The third is Facebook and Google Plus and some might include Twitter here although I'm not a big user of Twitter. The fourth spoke of the wheel is the forum found on RootsWeb and the new bulletin board. And the fifth spoke of the wheel is webinars, hangouts, and videos. And so let's go now and take a look at these individual resources. 
The first one, as I mentioned, is the journal. Now, Teresa Pask is a member of the Guild, and she is also the editor of the journal. If you don't read through the journal, if you just kind of browse through it, you're really missing something because I consider the journal to be an excellent scholarly effort by members of the Guild to write really interesting and really in-depth reviews of their studies or reviews of software programs or research resources that they use. There are three main sections of the journal. The first is the main articles and those are written by Guild members and I find it fascinating to read Guild articles written by the members um, because they might be dealing with something as uh, general as an American's approach to a one name study which is in the current edition or something as specific as a particular one name study research results. So please take a look at the journal for those articles. There's a second section which uh, includes guild reports, news, and events. And that's what one of the areas where you're going to find a lot of things that are going on in the guild and you get this on a quarterly basis. And then finally, there are regular features. And one of these that I find fascinating, I'm not there yet, but is really interesting to learn more about, um, it are the series of articles that are about the DNA studies. And then there are marriage challenge updates and book reviews. So I find that very helpful, especially as an American, uh, because I'm able to keep up with what's going on in the Guild in Great Britain. But the articles and the guild reports come from all over. So definitely make an effort to read the journal. You can read it when it comes in the mail on the quarterly basis. You can also read the issues online at the guild website. And the current issues for the current year are here. But also keep in mind that the journal has been uh, scanned and indexed and it's available to read archived versions. So really make an effort to check it out if you're certainly if you're a newer member and you didn't receive those earlier journals. The second spoke that I talked about was regional newsletters and this is something that I've become involved in as the regional representative for USA West but all of the regions uh, write up regional newsletters and it just depends on what the representative wants to do whether they're monthly or quarterly semi-annually but you can easily scroll through the various regions and take a look at their newsletters and I just wanted to give you a flavor here for some different regions um, what I've included here is Devon, Australia, Sussex and Canada and regional reps are given kind of carte blanche to write up the newsletter however they see fit and to interact with their members and so it's it's kind of nice to see the variety of newsletters. The third spoke is Facebook and Google Plus and to a lesser extent Twitter but I'm not going to be discussing Twitter today. Now Facebook and Google Plus are both methods of social media that you join you can fan Facebook or you can join a circle in Google Plus but that's basically the same thing you just are a member of that page so that you can sign in and see what's going on and various members will post items and they can do it as it's shown here either by posting and maybe attaching a video maybe attaching a link and then other members can reply, ask questions, whatever. That's done in Facebook and this is how it looks and you'll notice that Google Plus has a, a similar look um, but you can do a little bit more with determining which circles you want people to appear in. Um, that's probably uh, an issue for a separate uh, video. In any event, one really nice thing in Google Plus is that the Guild is involved in Google Plus Hangouts and they're held on the third Saturday of each month and there's one Google Hangout that is timed for the uh, British Isles and Australian uh, membership and another one that's timed for the North American membership and so there's two different hangouts they're open to um, the public basically uh, and all guild members and they are recorded so they're available if you can't make the hangout you can also watch the recorded version 
on YouTube. And so I think this is a really great way to interact with other members of the guild, to meet some of the other members, to ask questions. And the, and the guild hangouts tend to be focused for that one hour around a specific topic. So you can see if the topic's of interest to you and attend. I think that's really nice. Uh, the Google Plus Hangouts also provide for uh, attaching JPEGs or links or uh, documents or anything else that you want to do. So these are both really good ways of interacting with the membership. The fourth spoke of the wheel and one that a number of members use is the forum which is on RootsWeb and the bulletin board which is a new discussion board or forum. We're going to go into this in more depth because that's truly the point of this entire uh, video but I wanted to show you how it was a part of the larger picture. And finally, webinars, hangouts, and videos. There is a wealth of information that's on the internet. Sometimes people would say it's overwhelming or it's too much. And sometimes I would agree. But the thing that you need to keep in mind is that you can pick and choose what you want to pay attention to. And no one is forcing you to use anything. They're just giving you more opportunities and more methods of communication. I would encourage everyone to at least take a look at FamilySearch.org. And FamilySearch puts together a number of uh, great products, uh, whether that's uh, the microfilm that they have at the Family History Library and different centers, whether that's the information they're digitizing or the information that they're indexing to get more information online for us. Another thing that they do is they have a learning center and they make a series of videos that you can watch that are about a number of topics and they are broken down as you can see here by place they're also broken down by skill level and sometimes they're broken down by particular topics and so I would really encourage you to take a look at that especially if you're looking at a new record set say that you're from Great Britain and you want to understand how US censuses were put together you know or how to research them there's an excellent program about that uh, additionally, if you're um, someone from North America, you can take a look at how uh, vital records were registered in England. There's an entire section on English records that's in the Learning Center. So it's a really nice way to find out about records and find out the information you need to use in a, in a uh, video method. I would also encourage you to go to YouTube. Uh, the Guild of One Name Studies, when you put that in the search parameters, will show up, uh, the first few items will show up as Guild of One Name Study items. For instance, Peter Walker, who was the past chairman of the Guild, gave an introduction into what a One Name Study is. Uh, there are teasers for the seminars that are coming up. And some members, including me, have put videos um, online at YouTube to explain how to do um, particular records research. Finally, and this is just one example, Legacy Family Tree, which is an American company that uh, sells a genealogy database program uh, which is similar I think they all are similar there's different bells and whistles but uh, it would be similar to the British version of the family historian for instance or roots magic or family tree maker um, they host a series of webinars that people can attend and these are live webinars they're usually held on th um, Wednesdays I believe uh, at a particular time and you can attend live and you can ask questions or you can watch the recorded versions which are available at their website usually for 10 days after the webinar and then they're sold as CDs uh, by the company and so I would encourage you to check out what the future webinars are maybe register for one and attend it or watch one that's recently been recorded and see if that's a, a good way that you learn about different record sets now as I mentioned at the outset I believe that the Guild website located at www.one-name.org is really the start and the end of everything related to the Guild. And so you can go straight to the Guild website to find out 
the most recent news. And when you go to the Guild website, this is the page you land on. This is the home page and it's open to everyone. And you can read about the latest news. So let's take a look at that. So you've clicked on read about the latest news and what pops up is this page and it basically is short paragraphs that describe what's happening in the guild and you can scroll through the most current item is on top and you scroll through and you'll find historical news and by that I mean news that might be a month old or six months old. Uh, there's usually links and that's simply something that is in a different color and highlighted here, you know, underlined. If you click on this link, you're able to go to the information about, for instance, the Maritimes Records Seminar. There's a press release about the book that the Guild published back in April of 2012 about the seven pillars of wisdom, the art of one named studies. So this is a very good way, and if this is, this is the only way you get your news, you'll be in the know for what's going on with the Guild. You probably won't be involved in any discussions about particular questions and that's the point of some of the other news resources. Now when you enter the members room which is up here in the corner you go behind the paywall and basically what that means is if you're a member of the guild you've paid the equivalent in American dollars of $24 a year to belong to the Guild of One Name Studies. You don't have to register a surname you can just lurk which is basically what I did for the first two and a half years that I was a member. I used the various guild resources to assist me with my research but I wasn't really involved in the guild or that interested in registering my surname because I was just at the start of my research. But if I go on and click into the members room and sign in, this is the first thing I see. And what you'll notice with the three arrows that I've added is they provide more current news to members. And you'll see here that there's a reference to the new bulletin board forum and details on how to register for the bulletin board. There is a reference to the Journal of One Name Studies for the fourth quarter and you can take a look and click on it if you want to read it in an e-format. The Guild subscription year comes up in November for renewal and they describe what the various methods are for renewal and, and you just can click through here and be directed right to the sites that you need. There's also discussion of marriage challenges and search statistics for September. So let's take a look at each of those. The first item was a reference to the bulletin board and this is in the Guild Journal which you would have received probably in the mail if that's how you choose to receive it and others can read it online and at page 7 of the fourth quarter edition there is a discussion on page 7 about why the Guild thought it was necessary to come up with what they refer to as a proper forum but just a newer version of a forum that might be more useful to members. Colin Spencer who's a, a member of the Guild and very tech savvy um, checked out various uh, forum providers and selected one and put this whole site together for us which is really great in my opinion and just another example of members working together to to really help each other out and to kick it up a notch basically. Uh, there is also a lot of discussion in this one page article about how you register, get signed in, and how you use the bulletin board. And so if you haven't read about it yet, you might want to take a look at that at page 7 of the most current edition. Now another thing that we saw with those arrows that I pointed out in the members room was membership renewal. And the first thing I'm going to point out is these buttons along the top are available to anyone to look at. You don't have to be a guild member. But when you click on the member members room, you actually get these additional items. And so there's self-service, services, information, the library, which I find really helpful, uh, sales of books is here. This is another important one, regions. 
And this is the area that you'd look at if you wanted to take a look at membership by region. Also, if you'd want to take a look at any of the newsletters that are published on a regional basis. But the section that we're looking at right now in self-service is all about membership renewal. I would say for most North Americans, the easiest way we have of renewing is through PayPal. And that's the first item here, and there's a link right to it. And so you can quickly go to membership renewal and go ahead and renew your membership. But there's other methods mentioned here in greater detail, and I think that's probably for the more familiar for the maybe the Canadian and certainly the European and Australian market. Additionally, the most current guild marriage challenges are listed here. And so any of the upcoming challenges are here, and you can quickly take a look, even if they've been mentioned in the forum or elsewhere, what's on tap, and they put it in order so you can see when your deadlines are. Anything from one that's now already passed through the end of the year. You can see what the registration district is, the period of the challenge, the deadline for requests, who the challenger is, the person who's actually going to be gathering that information for all of us, as well as their email. I have, as you can tell, covered over the addresses um, because the YouTube is public and I don't know if they want their address out there. is the Guild Surname Search Statistics. And this is something that I wasn't even aware of until I started putting this video together. Uh, when people land on the Guild homepage, they can type in their surname and see if it's registered. And so the first box here is surname searches that are done by anyone. And the largest one here, the one that had the, the most number of hits, was Smith. A number of Smiths, Browns, Taylors, and Johnsons, you know, all came on and looked to see if their name was registered. And I think what this means is people came on to look and see if their name was registered, but it doesn't, they didn't necessarily get a hit. They weren't necessarily successful. Over here on the right hand side are the successful name searches. So for instance, there were 13 uh, attempts to see if McAllister was a registered surname and in fact it is. So all of these names that are listed here from McAllister down to Cumberbatch uh, were successful searches and what that means is that an individual could just be googling their surname or coming onto the Guild of One Name Studies to see if anyone has registered the surname. Maybe they're new to genealogy and they're just looking at all sources of their surname. And if they found McAllister here, and that is their surname, they would know that there is a registered one name study for the name McAllister. They could go to that profile page and they could contact the person who is doing the one name study. They might ask questions about the surname. They might offer to provide their own information that they've already researched. They might offer to be a co-researcher and look in an area for McAllister's that they're familiar with or that they live in that maybe the person uh, in charge of the one name study is not able to get to those records. So it, this is a really good opportunity and we should all take it to make sure we have our profile online at the Guild and make sure we register our surname so that we can be the person they get a hold of and we can work together with other people that share our surname to further our own studies. Now, as I mentioned, when you are in the members room, you can click on regions and then you, you can scroll through all of the regions. And for instance, right here, you're going to see the USA West region, which is the region that I'm the representative for. And you'll see I took over in very late June and I published a newsletter in July and then I've done one for the next three months as well. And sometimes I have an attachment. This is about hanging out with the Guild and it's just a freestanding attachment. So if you want to understand more about hanging out with the Guild, another Guild member wrote this, uh, Jim Benedict out of Canada, and it's very useful. And it might be something you want to download just for your own purposes. But you can also take a look at any of these newsletters just by clicking on them. So let's take a quick look right now. The Guild newsletters that I'm working on for my region are going to have at the top all of the items that I plan on covering in the newsletter. And in the most recent, I talked about membership renewal and the Seven Pillars of Wisdom book. I also talked, I try to talk each month about a Guild resource, and this one in particular is about Guild hang, um, Google Hangouts. 
The next item was tip of the month, which was Family Tree at Family Search, which is just starting mid month and encouraging our guild members to at least give it a try. And then I have questions that members have sent in from the USA West region. And this was about gathering SSDI data for a one name study. And I directed the members to a video I made showing them how I did it and hopefully they could follow along. Each month I have included an eye on a particular area of our membership and in October it was Oregon and a particular member's one name study. Uh, in September I talked about uh, the, the Guild resource was Guild uh, Google Plus page and Hangouts. I talked about Eye on our Hawaii membership and the tip of the month was about publishing your profile on the Guild website. What's involved, how to do it, all of that. And the thing that I did there was I basically challenged the other members of the USA region as well as myself to publish our profiles if we didn't already have them online uh, by November 1st. So that's something we're working on and hopefully it will get our surname one name studies out there. Um, I took a few questions that I had received in my email and then the extra extra uh, was about uh, for September, it was about the bulletin board, which was a new social media item. So I explained it to the USA West region members. So that just gives you kind of a flavor of what certain uh, newsletters can look like. And there's, as I mentioned before, and as I showed you, there's a wide variety of newsletters out there. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is that I get all of my emails from the forum that's on Roots Web in email and when I get them they show up like this I have added a special label so it says Guild of One Name Studies so that I can see what those are and kind of scroll through them as I have the time and the interest um, but on any given month you might be receiving in your regular email or an email that you've set up specifically for uh, genealogy or One Name Studies you might be receiving 200 pieces of mail like this. So it's kind of a lot to get through and there's various ways to organize or file your emails. Um, but, but this is how the forum email comes if you choose to receive it that way. Now when you go onto the Guild forum, and this is the archives, everything is contained in a month format and it'll tell you how many messages there were from when they first started in 1969 and if you were to scroll through all the way you'd be at um, October 2012 at this point. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. And this is what the uh, welcome or the home page looks like on the Guild's bulletin board. And you'll notice right away that it's not done in date order, it's done in topic order. And this is something that I find really useful. And it gives you the ability to do a number of things right in this bulletin board page. And we're going to go into those in more detail.